In this video, we're going to take a look at using Perforce Visual Merge tool to take care of any uh, conflicts that might arise in a multi-developer environment when we're working in parallel. So to simulate this, I'm using a virtual machine. Uh, so this is basically a computer within my computer. It's got Git inside of it. It's its own environment. Um, you could think of this as somebody that's working in uh, a different uh, cubicle or a different city or a different part of the world. Down here is me working on my machine. And to get started, I'm going to create the repository that we'll uh, both be working out of. And I'm going to initialize the repository. And then I need to clone it down. And if I look, I can see that readme file is in there from initialization. And now I'm going to just clone down for the remote developer as well. And I can see the readme file in there. So right now, if I'm looking at this, we're all together, the remote developer, me, and GitHub are all at the same commit right now. When I'm working in a multi-developer environment, branches are really important. So I want to take advantage of our hack and ship. Uh, in order to do that, I need to be working in remote branches. So for the remote developer, I'm going to go ahead and create the branch and switch into it. And I just created a branch called Remote Development Features, and now I'm switching into it. And if you'll notice, I'm no longer on master. I'm in the branch I created. So now I'm going to do my work in this remote branch, and I'm going to leave master basically untouched. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is get rid of this readme file. And if I check the git status, I can see that it's no longer, uh, the file's been deleted, but it's still being tracked, so I need to remove the tracking. Okay, so I deleted the readme file there. Uh, and then I'm gonna just create another file. And I'll just edit it quickly to add some content. And now if I check the status, I should see that new file, but it is not being tracked. So I'm going to track it. Okay. And I'm ready, ready to commit at this point. And I've committed locally. If I look up here, I can see my changes. My changes are not on GitHub. And my changes are not on this remote machine. If I want to push those changes, I will switch back to the master. I 
I'll merge in my branch. And then I'll push the local master up to the origin master. And then I will delete that local feature branch. I don't need it anymore. If I check my branches locally, I can see there's only master. If I check GitHub, I can see that my commit changed and is now uh, origin master or GitHub is up to date. Um, but this user is still out of date. So it looks kind of like this. but Mike is still back here. So if I want to update Mike, I'll need to pull. And now when I look, I can see that the, the readme file is deleted and remote is in there. Everything and everyone are on the second commit now. So if I want to uh, do work that would introduce a conflict, um, then the conflict would get resolved by the hack and ship. Uh, so to do that, I'm going to uh, get in, I'm going to create a local branch here. So I created it with a dash B and I switched into it with the checkout. So now I'm in my feature branch. And the remote developer is going to be doing some work at the same time. So they need to get into a feature branch. Okay, and they're in their feature branch. So this work will be going on simultaneously. Obviously here I have to do it uh, one, at, one screen at a time, but these would these uh, two developers would be working at the same time. And so while Mike was down here busy editing the file, the remote would also be busy editing the file. So one of these two developers will get done editing first. And when whoever is done editing first will uh, push up to GitHub and they should go in with no conflicts. So let's say uh, that Mike was the first one to get done. So Mike's going to hack and ship. So now it's been a couple of minutes since the, I pulled uh, master. Someone could have pushed to GitHub in the meantime. So I'm going to go back to GitHub or I'm going to go back to my master. And I'm going to just pull. Okay, nobody did. Everything's up to date. Now I'm going to go back into my feature branch. And now I'm going to rebase master. So any changes that might have occurred to master were updated when I pulled. And now I'm going to take those changes and stick them into this feature branch I'm working on. Okay, everything is up to date. So now I have all my code is current. I need to ship it out of here. So I'm going to go back into the master branch. I'm going to merge my feature branch. So now everything from the feature branch was pulled up into the local master. So now that I have everything merged together, uh, I'm going to push my local master up to origin master or up to GitHub. OK, 
Okay. And let me check GitHub and see if it updated. And it did update. So essentially, I am here. Mike and Origin Master are ahead right now of the remote developer. So keep in mind that while this was going on down here and I was adding my name to it and uh, I was committing and pushing and all that kind of stuff, the remote developer was also doing work. We were doing it at the same time in parallel. We're working in feature branches and that's important because now we can go back uh, to our master branch and see if there were any changes. So the remote developer is all done. Uh, we need to go ahead and commit those changes. And we can see that we modified the name, uh, the file we added our name into it. So we're going to commit, uh, stage it, and then commit it. Okay, so our work is all done. We're ready to hack this and then ship it up to, to GitHub. So we will pull down our master. Switch to our master. Now we're going to pull down the origin master. So so now the changes from Mike are up to date. So we're going to switch to the feature branch. And I'm going to rebase the master. So I'm going to take the changes from the master, which come off of GitHub, and I'm going to push them into uh, the branch I'm working on, just to make sure my branch is up to date. And notice I have a conflict. So to resolve the conflict, I need to start my merge tool. Okay, this is the Perforce P4 visual merge tool. And here I can see um, this seems backwards to me, but it this is the changes from uh, the remote developer, which is remote. That doesn't mean remote developer. Uh, these are the changes from the other developer that were already up on GitHub local. This is the base, so this is without any changes right here. And then this is my working copy down here. And I can see that these come in here nicely. They're not true conflicts, um, but I can edit these files, edit these lines down here in the working copy. When I'm done, I can save it all up. So I've basically just accepted both changes saved it and now I'm going to close it and now when I get status I can see that remote was modified I'm going to just continue my rebase okay. everything looks good so the conflict has been resolved. I've continued my rebase and finished. If there were any other conflicts, those would have come up. Uh, so now I've, I need to ship it back. So I'm going to get go back to my master. I'm going to merge in my branch with my master. And I'm going to push it up to GitHub. Okay, so my changes are pushed up. So now if I look at GitHub, I should see the remote developer. And if I look in here, I should see both of those changes that are resolved in the conflict. So just a little bit about using uh, Hack and Ship and the Perforce Visual Merge Tool.